Welcome to the Fear Fiction Podcast. Fear Fic is the term for short horror fiction, mostly posted on the web. It includes any and all related subgenres. Join three assholes, talking basement goo slime beast, inebriated interstellar traveler abysme, and irritable ghostly man whore dead palette, as they read all stories horror and internet related, paragraph by paragraph, and bullshit while they do it. From adolescent revenge fantasies to subtle postmodern narratives about real life events and everything in between, they read it and critique. You better believe it. Kick it to the cold open, white boy. So, what would you guys wish for if you were a Make a Wish kid? Hmm. What's my affliction? Go back to go back to when you were a kid. <laughs> What's my affliction? Would... Sounds like an alternative album cover. <laughs> What's, my, What's my affliction? <laughs> Is it really poor addiction? But yeah, I, I don't know. Whatever affliction you want. Let's say you have uh, space AIDS. Mm, yeah, me specifically. Well, if I was a kid, me ask, so. yeah. If I, if like, assuming I'm a kid, um, yeah, you can't ask for hookers or alcohol or whatever. You know, you wouldn't want I, those. I, if from when I was a kid, it would probably be to. Be on the set of Star Trek Next Generation Fuck. with Captain Picard. That's where you get space AIDS. <laughs> That's where also where you cure space AIDS. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how about you, DP? Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, I would I would say uh, I I want to sniff Amanda Bynes. <laughs> <laughs> Not even Amanda Bynes, but where she sat. <laughs> Okay. Uh it's all that <laughs> I think we're gonna have to we're gonna have to put this kid in a medically induced coma. Yep, okay. <laughs> I want I want to see Amanda Bynes. Oh, you want to meet Amanda Bynes? I heard she smells nice. I want to sniff her. God damn it. Uh, oh man. It's see, it's fine. We're the same age ish. See Abysme sort of Almost touched upon what I would wish for. Uh, I would, I would wish, wish to be better and not die. But okay, if you guys, okay, but want to be on a show or sniff some hoe? I, no one fucking tells them go. that when Let they the wi- make a wish foundation some, comes in. No one says, "What can you wish for?" And they yeah. say, "To be better." Sorry, just, we can't do that. I just asked what you would wish for. I didn't say it had to be doable. You said Make a Wish Foundation. That yeah. comes with certain parameters. You think that nobody has ever asked that of the Make a Wish Foundation? Yeah, and they've all been fucking disappointed when they say no, but when we can have you beat Batman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Why are you guys making this so dark? I don't understand. Batman, can you defeat cancer? Dude, no. <laughs> Jesus My Christ. parents are dead. Uh, let me just get some kryptonite. Uh, actually, no, that, that, that has a... Uh, I don't know if you guys have read the comics, but, you know, in canon, it actually causes uh, yeah. cancer. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so... Doesn't it give Lex Luthor cancer and then he merges with um, Brainiac? No, what happens is what happens is uh, Lex Luthor was a kid who wished to meet Superman, and <laughs> <laughs> Superman flew with him through a time paradox where he grew up. That's why he's bald. It's because he had <laughs> yeah. And uh, ever since then, uh, Lex Luthor has been trying to kill Superman because basically he ruined his Make a Wish, you know, day. By aging him several decades, <laughs> Lex Luthor is taxes. permanently on chemo, and that's why he's bald. <laughs> Superman, I wish that I could grow older. Well, let me help you with that, son. <laughs> You're 37. Oh what fuck! fuck? <laughs> not even 20, not even 18, 37. What? what? Okay. Mm. Superman, you prick. But yeah. So mm. yeah, you guys both failed the test. Um, I look forward to. Both of you taking the summer course on what to wish for if you're dying. I still but, can't. Think but of this one. is summer. Yeah. So we're in the summer course. Yeah. Well, so actually, we I mean the summer course. I mean, summer thirty-seven years from now, if you'll just go along with Superman, he'll fly Bring around me the back world on this day when you're thirty-seven. That's a real question, though. If Superman can, in Superman, is it Superman two? Two. Where he flies around the Earth backwards and goes back in time. Can he fly forward and go ahead in time? Mm, presumably, yes. If that were canon still, or at all, ever. I mean, that's basically what happens. Spoilers in Endgame. T- what the Tony fuck? Did you- <laughs> <laughs> Superman Tony- comes in. Uh, 
Tony Stark is just like like I, I don't think we I don't think we can invent time travel and then two minutes later he's like some, I guess time travel is real now. Some of us haven't seen the fucking movie. Some of us are poor and don't go to the theater. You frig. Some of us don't want to watch. It. Some of it's, us don't want to watch the cam video on the internet where people are getting up and standing up in front of fucking Hawkeye. Watch just watching Chinese people cough for three hours. <laughs> Chinese people cough for three hours. The most popular trending video on YouTube. But, yeah. Some good ass ASMR right there. <laughs> <laughs> How can you tell if the coughing is Chinese? It's that sounds of bird flu. Is that communism? Oh. oh. <laughs> what happens is someone coughs and then someone else immediately yells silence in Chinese. C- c- quarter of our uh, environment's polluted. C- c- why are they speaking Hong Kong English? Kong isn't a sovereign nation. Why are they? <laughs> why are they speaking Taiwan throwing... out of here? Uh, Bisbee's just throwing all these the other shade to China. Damn. <laughs> oh, guess no who's more not... shade than their polluted skies. Guess who's not we going need to, to China? Build a wall to keep out all the Chinese. <laughs> keep them inside China. There's too many of them. Guess who's not going to China for his honeymoon? <laughs> One child policy. <laughs> That doesn't even make sense. I know, the one child policy is a terrible idea. Oh. Mm. Mm. And no, I was not planning to go to China, so I don't care. Mm. Mm. Wasn't planning to go to China. Abysme wasn't planning to go to China, but sometimes fate intervenes. Now, Hey, this- <laughs> gamers, welcome back to Film Theory. I don't know what you're doing on this channel, but did you know that Mulan is Chinese? <laughs> Mm. <laughs> That's a man. What? <laughs> that doesn't make. No. Okay. Well, Mulan's not going to be Chinese when Mulan's being played by Halle Berry. I fucking. What the fuck are you talking about? The Curse of the Colonel. <laughs> moving on. Mm. Moving, moving way on. Moving, moving on. way on. Moving, moving way on. By the way, is what the Chinese government has been trying to do to a protester for several decades, but way on <laughs> refuses to move. He's a stalwart defender of whatever. Just standing in front of those tanks. <laughs> yes! <laughs> they're, they're both still there. Tiananmen <laughs> Square hasn't changed much in the past 30 years. Every so often, the guy just comes out of the tank, and they just, you know, go and get tea or something and come back. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. All uh, right. I, I do love how, like, initially I'm like, hey, guys, let's make, like, a kid-friendly episode as a joke. <laughs> and, like, we, we shit all over that immediately. We're just like... <laughs> Communism, one child policy, fucking sniffing Amanda it's, Bynes. It's educational. <laughs> You're learning all Look, about communism. You're learning about Tiananmen Square. You You're can't learning about your kids forever. You're learning about Amanda Bynes' strange pheromone laced scent of sweat and amphetamines, I guess. <laughs> Fetamine? And Fetamines. M and Fetamine is the character she played. I think I think she uh, recovered from her drug addiction. So uh, you never actually truly the recover. You always are an addict. You just have to you have to mm. watch for relapses. It does help when you're detoxing. You just sweat out the amphetamines, though. Mm-hmm. And sweatamines. Sweatamines. Game. Ooh, we're we're getting weird, guys. No. <laughs> Okay, so... So, uh, let's get this back on track. Let's stop being weird. Okay, DP, your first story that you've suggested would be... Fucking Wikipedia article. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well, that's not too bad. What is it about? (laughs) Uh, It's about the curse of the colonel, of of Colonel Sanders. Hmm. Colonel Sanders, no... No, Rudy... (laughs) I just want to point out that's not racist because both Abysme and DP are half Chinese. Mm. Japanese. What's the Chinese? Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so this 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 just just, just stroking stroking out the story was. <laughs> <laughs> it's late, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is our second recording session and of the night. I want to point out that if strokes are more common genetically for Chinese people, that is not a reference that DP was intending to make, if that is the case. <laughs> Do you think people contract swine flu from Je- from Chinese Colonel Sanders? <laughs> yes. I don't know why is it's that... not bird flu, but sure. <laughs> chickens are that's, that's birds the and secret. birds are chickens. <laughs> That's the secret. Chinese KFC is actually just all pork. Hmm. 
<laughs> Makes sense. That's that's my secret kernel. <laughs> I'm always pork. <laughs> <laughs> The 13, the 11 herbs and spices are actually pork. <laughs> it's all pork. God pork it. byproducts. <laughs> it's all pork. <laughs> it's pork all the way down, gentlemen. <laughs> it's pork all the way down. <laughs> when Westerners go to China and they go to KFC, they're very, very confused. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my <Fuck>. God. <sighs> In my defense, <laughs> K- 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 is KFC it? is poor. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking shit. <laughs> you need to both stop dishonoring the memory of Trotsky by making fun of the colonel. <laughs> oh. the, the Colonel Sanders is a uh, first. Uh, first of his name. <laughs> His first recipe was uh, for glazed ham, so... Oh, it all makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, in, in the glazed ham arc of the Colonel Sanders comic. This is such a <sighs> fucking surreal episode. <laughs> really is. And I want to point out, the cold open for this episode was DP's <laughs> idea. <laughs> <laughs> all his fault. Abysme was like, yeah, I agree. Great idea. <laughs> You literally just made me spit like I'm losing it. And wow, I hold the record as the first man to make DP spit. (laughs) (laughs) Let me know when I go too far. (laughs) Oh, Oh. Christ. Elias, cut that all out. Okay, who has a cold open? Fuck no, keep that in. It's cold. Uh, uh, somebody got a towel. Um, this was suggested, like, uh, somebody got a towel, said the Chinese guy. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Some Ting Wong. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> we too low. Ah, uh, what was Tumulus it? Tumulus. D- Bang Ding Ao or something? I don't know. Yeah. Tumulus suggested, uh, this on the, our, uh, my Discord. And, uh, I want to read it with you guys. It's Who, a who'd you say suggested it? Tamil Tigers? Camel Tigers. Camel, Camel, Camel Tigers. Tigers. The, the worst Camel selling... The Camel are worse. The worst selling 80s toy on the market, the Camel Tigers. Camel Tigers. Part Camel, yeah. part Tiger. All oh, awesome. Camel Tigers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then they can hunt from the oasis, but also carry 20 gallons of water. They also just, like, they have real spitting action. <laughs> they spit fangs really far. <laughs> Ahmed is the guy you can really trust. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's hump day. <laughs> uh, if you want action, Rahib is a must. <laughs> hey, where's the party? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's flush this out into a show and pitch it to Adult Swim. Oh, they do hold live streams where you can just pitch it over the air. Oh. That'd be cool. Hmm. Camel Tigers. <laughs> Camel Tigers. <laughs> just 15 second ads for toys, and then like it gets picked up into a show. The Curse of the Colonel hmm. uh, refers to an urban legend regarding a reputed stroganoff. Reputed curse placed on the Japanese Kansai-based Hanshin Tigers baseball team by deceased KFC founder and mascot Colonel Harlan Sanders. So it's a curse on a baseball team in China from Colonel Sanders. (laughs) What? This is the this is the giggliest episode we've ever done. I don't know if anyone finds this funny, but it's fucking hilarious to me. Hmm. The curse was said to be placed on the team because the colonel's anger over treatment of one of his (laughs) storefront statues. Okay. Which was thrown into the uh, Dotonbori River by celebrating Hanshin fans following (laughs) their team's victory in the 1985 Japanese Championship Series. 
As is common with sports-related curses, the curse of the Colonel was used to explain the team's subsequent 18-year <laughs> losing streak. <laughs> There are, wait a minute, 18 years, 18 herbs and spices, it all makes sense. Mm. Uh, some fans believe the team would never win another Japanese series until the statue had been recovered. Uh, they have appeared in the Japanese series three times since then, losing in 2003, 2005, and 2014. Hmm. <sighs> okay. Okay. Comparisons are often made between the Henshin Tigers and the Boston Red Sox, who were said to be under the curse of the Bambino until they won the World Series in 2004. The curse of the Colonel has also been used as a boogeyman threat to those who would divulge the secret recipe <laughs> of 11 herbs and spices that results in the unique taste of his chicken. The taste of his chicken is one of my favorite romance novels. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's just a, uh, the, the graphic for the cover is just like a chiseled man's chest mm -hmm. and like a woman's arm caressing the like navel of his chest, mm -hmm. but like also pressing a drumstick into it. Yeah. Press, putting a drumstick into his navel. Harland lifted her up and shoved his meaty wing into her deep fat fright. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, baby, let me get at that DFF right. <laughs> Damn it. I'm about to reach the 11th urban spice. You know why they call it a deep fat fryer? Because it burns! Mm. <laughs> anyway. History. 1985 Japan series. Shall I just take, take this section in total? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, not history, but the Japan series. Yeah. 1985 Japan series. The Hanshin Tigers, which sounds like an Overwatch team, are located in Kensai the second largest metropolitan area in Japan. They are considered the eternal underdogs of Nippon professional baseball. That's got to be like the most backhanded comment. You guys are like the eternal underdogs. Like, you're always going to lose. You suck that much. I, we're rooting for you. I am the eternal underdog, and I will take over Earth one of these days. Nothing ever really works out, but, you know. Wait, wait is this going to be like, hey, this team that always loses won once, and then they kept losing, and they're blaming the statue? Yes. Mm, maybe. You know what this is, you fucking... They are considered the eternal underdogs of Nippon professional baseball in opposition to the... Yomiori Giants of Tokyo, who are considered the kings of Japanese baseball. Your Chinese pronunciation is excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's in Japanese. The, it's in Japan. <laughs> the devoted fans flock to the stadium no matter how badly the Tigers play in the league. In 1985, much to the nation's surprise, the Hanshin Tigers faced the Saibu Lions? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, and, took, I think so, yeah. and took their first and only victory in the Japan series, largely due to the efforts of star slugger Randy Bass, <laughs> presently state senator of Oklahoma. What the fuck? An American playing for the team. Okay, to this creepypasta author, you have to pay more attention to your realism. <laughs> this makes no <laughs> sense. <laughs> what the fuck are you writing here? The fan base went wild, and a riotous celebration gathered at Ebisu Bridge in Dondonbori, Osaka. There's no way you can read that without doing an accent, because it... Okay, let me try it, let me try it. This is what you'd be dealing with if I didn't do that. Gathered at Ebisu Bridge in Dondonbori, Osaka. Yeah. There, an assemblage of supporters yelled the players' names, and with every name, a fan resembling a member of the victorious team leaped from the bridge into the waiting canal! What the fuck? People who looked like the team members jumped into the canal off a bridge? It's However... A fan resembling a member of the victorious team left from... Okay. So they a would fan shout a name. The they would shout a name, and someone looking like the team member would emerge from the crowd and leap to their death. No, I don't know if they actually probably didn't die. Uh huh. I see, well, it makes sense, though, because all Chinese people look the same. Oh, my fucking God. However, lacking a Caucasian, ugh, a Caucasian person to imitate MVP Randy Bass... Oh, my God, <laughs> the rabid crowd seized a pl plastic statue of Colonel Sanders. <laughs> like Bass, the colonel had a beard and was not Japanese, from a nearby KFC and tossed it off the bridge as an effigy. Are you f Sports fans are fucking weird. Yes. <laughs> yes. You guys are fucking weird. We're not touching anything else about that. Sports fans are strange. 
I don't know, a fan resembling a member of the team would jump into the canal. According to the urban legend, this impulsive maneuver cost the team greatly, beginning the Curse of the Colonel, which states that the Tigers will not win the championship again until the statue is recovered. Subsequently, numerous attempts have been made to recover the statue, often as part of a variety TV show. James Cameron uh, <laughs> went down there once to try it. Most James of the st- Cameron tapped right. <laughs> Most of the statue was recovered in March 2009. He's missing his glasses, which is odd because they were stoned, but okay. Mm. So and what do we think when, of that? When, now on Japanese television, uh, you know, hope you enjoyed your episode of Japanese girls eating cupcakes. Now we're going to be uh, moving on to trying to get the uh, Colonel Sanders statue out of the uh, Hanshin Basin, Ebisu Basin. Uh, and, and then after that, we're going to, uh, you know, have an hour of upskirt shots in bathrooms. Why do I why do I just picture them trying to retrieve the statue by sending in like guys who you know are dressed in like body suits and like running along and then diving yeah. into the water like past a bunch of like rubber balls and you know absolutely <laughs> just like contestant after contestant jumping through holes shaped like their body you know different game show things <sighs> no I think I think they would just send the Power Rangers down there oh yeah the Power Rangers versus the Colonel where have I heard that before go go mm. Power Rangers holy <laughs> shit <laughs> go find Colonel Sanders <laughs> 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 oh, lemon <laughs> herbs and spices <laughs> See, if I had any forethought instead of the Power Rangers, it would have been the 1985 Hunchin Tigers game. Oh, there you go. 18, like Power Rangers. Yeah, 18 year losing streak. After their success in 1985 series, the Hunchin Tigers began an 18 year losing streak, placing last or next to last in the league. Brief rallies in 1992 and 1999 brought hope to fans, but were soon followed with defeat. Mm. Uh, I'm assuming. Uh, every time that they lost, they committed seppuku. Yes. During every time this... they lost, they threw some fan who looked like one of the team members into the canal. <laughs> <laughs> they stabbed him in the stomach and threw him in. Jesus. <laughs> During this, uh, hey time, guys, they... guys, do you, do you think maybe our losing streak is because we keep killing people and throwing them in the river? <laughs> no. No, it's, it's a because of that fucking statue. <laughs> yeah. Every, Obviously. Every, everyone else is like inculcated in the culture of just stabbing people and throwing them in the river <laughs> except for all the westerners they bring over randy bass is just like whoa is this necessary do you think maybe we just need to like practice more no no oh, this is the way you do it you know uh randy bass here i you know i i really want to partake of this ritual but you know i'm american it's uh you don't happen to have a gun right no okay well i can't really can't do it then gotta you know not, hey, my, not my gamers. way. Randy yeah, Bass here. here. <laughs> Newest champion isn't doing well, so we're going to take someone who looks like Baptiste and throw him in the river. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Uh, um, it's a Haitian, so they'll know how to swim. During this oh, attempt for me... Oh. <laughs> Why was that a dark joke? No, the, both of them were. Just <laughs> <laughs> During this time, attempts were made to recover the statue including sending divers down and dredging the river, but they all failed. Fans apologized to the store manager, but the statue remained in the canal, and the tigers cursed. They apologized to the store manager, but he's like, don't apologize to me. It's the colonel, you know. Mm -hmm. Outranks me. 2002 World Cup. Although the leap into Dautenbori Canal and the curse of the colonel is usually associated only with a Hanshin Tiger victory in 2002... When Japan beat Tunisia in the World Cup, some 500 fans jumped into the canal as a celebration in spite of heavy police security. Stop jumping! What is wrong with you people? (laughs) Oh god, this gets weird. In addition... What are the Japanese police going to do? Like, don't do that. It's like, what are you going to do? Shoot me? Yeah. Don't do that. If I fail to stop you, I have to commit seppuku, please. It's like shooting Hanshin Tiger uh, fans in a barrel. Hmm. Uh, they, they in addition, to, they have to commit seppuku, but they only have the little batons. <laughs> this may take a while. Oh. In addition, a Colonel Sanders statue was taken from the storefront of a KFC in nearby Kobe. Stop taking statues! Oh my! What is God. wrong with you people? 
And its hands were cut off, supposedly in imitation of Sharia law? What the fuck? This is a weird-ass article. This is weirder than the Paw Patrol story. <laughs> that one was just fucking gross. This is weird. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, so, so the Japanese are, like, red-pilled on the problems of Sharia law? What is going on? I don't know. I, I was know. so confused. Oh, wait. They beat Tunisia. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that that I get, but like, I but that's be, still weird. Yeah, I I wouldn't. I, I maybe I'm wrong, but I wouldn't expect the Japanese to be like, <laughs> just like this offensive kind of humor about it. Well, in Tunisia, as far like maybe not now, but for a long time, Tunisia also had a kind of more tolerant view of other religions. Mm. Like their, um, I remember reading their constitution maintains that the leader has to be a Muslim, but you can still be Christian or Jewish or whatever, and that was okay. I don't know what it is now, but back then I think that was the case. So this is very strange. Well, I don't know about Tunisia, but I know Turkey, like in a matter of like five years, went from like yes, really yes. open-minded to like heavily conservative you have to keep in mind that no matter where this is no matter who it is there's the universal human law that sports fans are idiots so (laughs) yeah i mean you're expecting people to have you know logical sensible stances on sharia law i mean (laughs) but anyway i do like that uh i do wonder if the kfc in kobe sells kobe fried beef Kobe fried chicken. No, everything they sell is they mold it t- into the shape of Kobe Bryant. Mm. <laughs> 2003 Central League. In 2003, the Tigers had an unexpectedly strong season. Their chief rivals, the Yomiuri Giants, lost their star player Hideki Matsui. Mm-hmm. Matsui. Hideki Matsui. To the New York Yankees. Okay. Damn. While the Tigers saw the... Guess they yanked him. Yeah, they sure did. They sure yanked him. While the Tigers saw the return of pitcher Hideki Irabu. Yeah. Okay. I love how you're acting like you're not a weeb. (laughs) Ah, yeah. Why am I acting like I'm not a weeb? Oh, watching all them animes. Back to... What's your favorite anime, guys? Mine is... uh, Doku... Doku, 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 Larry? <laughs> Larry. Doku, Larry? Doku, 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 Larry Club. <laughs> Doki, Doki, Larry. Uh, back to the DLC for Doki, Doki Literature Club. Introduces the new character, Larry, who you can court. Back to NPB after playing with the Texas Rangers. The Tigers won the Central League to qualify for the Japan Series, and many new pa- newspapers speculated that the curse of the colonel had finally been broken. The Tigers lost the Japanese series, this time to the, <sighs> fuck Fukuoka. you, okay? Daiyai Hawks. Is that how you pronounce it? Fuck you, okay? Yeah. Fu- Fuku- Fukuoka. So the curse is presumably intact. Fans were enthusiastic about winning the Central League, and repeatedly the celebratory leap into Don Tonbori Canal, and repeated it, okay. However, instead of the individual leapers representing the players, over 5,300 fans plunged into the canal. Uh. Answering the old question, if your friends jumped off a bridge, would you? <laughs> many many KFC... <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't funny! <laughs> yes, it was. Many KFC outlets in Kobe and Osaka moved their Colonel Sanders statues inside <laughs> until the series was over to protect them from rabid tiger fans. You think they would just wise up and just not have Colonel Sanders statues after the third incident? That makes no sense whatsoever. Or or just, like, glue them to the ground. That's true. (laughs) Make them so that they dissolve in water. The (laughs) the newly replaced Colonel Sanders statue in the Dontonbori KFC Um, branch was bolted down to prevent a repeat of the incident. Okay. There you go. Oh, man. You gotta nail down your colonels in this neighborhood. (laughs) Just, just put like steel a steel cage over your your uh, Colonel Sanders statue. God damn it! Death. Oh, in the canal for twenty four year old Hanshin Tigers fan Matsuya Chitababa. Uh, the two thousand three celebration was a tragedy. Okay, here's the section we can't make any jokes about. <laughs> mm. He drowned in. <laughs> 
Shitababa drowned. <laughs> he drowned in the canal with all the reports being that he had been shoved in by the revelers. Damn. To prevent future incidents, the Osaka City Council ordered the construction of a new Ebisubashi Bridge beginning in 2004, which will make it more difficult for fans to take the celebratory leap should the curse of the colonel be broken and the tigers win again. Oh my god, what a fucking... What a thought. Building a new bridge to prevent fans from leaping into the river should Colonel Sanders lift his curse and have the baseball team win again. It's like But the but the team sucks, so like who cares? Just yeah. that's a waste of money. That's a waste <laughs> of taxpayer Christ. money. They're not gonna win again, so it doesn't matter. Mm. Oh man, this the is fans so the fans are just lining up at the bridge like eh? Eh? Oh, oh. oh well. Recovery of statue. The colonel was finally discovered in the Dontembori River on March 10th, 2009. Divers who recovered the statue at first thought it was only a large barrel, <laughs> and shortly after, a human corpse. Mm. But Hanshin fans on the scene were quick to identify it as the upper body of the long-lost colonel. They're all just sitting there being like, yep, yeah, no, that's the colonel. Yeah. That, that's him. There's the like right this- hand... <laughs> There's like this elderly man with white hair and a long beard and like a pipe, and he's sitting there and he goes, he's going, I recognize that upper body. It was many years ago on this very spot. 2003 was the day. <laughs> <laughs> I remember divers it. Reco- like it divers was who recovered the statue at first thought it was only a large. Oh, sorry, I didn't just yeah. did that. Uh, the right hand and lower body were found next day, but the statue was still missing its glasses and left hand. <laughs> I was right. It is said that the only way to cur- the curse can be lifted is by returning his long lost glasses and left hand. Ah, uh, just keep the moving s- those goalposts. Uh-huh. Right. The statue was later recovered with replacement of new glasses in hand and returned to KFC Japan, as the KFC restaurant that the statue originally belonged to no longer exists. The statue was now placed in the branch near Kosh Koshien Koshien Kosh- Koshien Stadium. All right. I want to point out there's an inset image of a sign that says, Dangerous, do not dive into this river. Osaka Regional Development Bureau and Osaka Minami Police Station. You would think you wouldn't have to tell people. They didn't even build a new bridge. They just built a sign that says, Hey, don't dive. And everyone was like, Aw. All right. And the Japanese are so polite. They're just like, Okay. Yeah. Damn it. There's a sign now. Did you ever go to, like, uh, those sites where they collect all the images of, like, badly worded signs from Japan and In- like English that. yeah yeah no. um one of my favorites actually the only one i actually remember it was my favorite one where the sign said something like please fall carefully into the river <laughs> <laughs> like it- my fa- my favorite one is uh there's a sign that's like a uh, national park or whatever and it says uh you know it's, you know text in japanese and then below it is the english translation and it says please don't piss and shit everywhere <laughs> <laughs> I need that, that. I need that sign just to put over my cat box or something. <laughs> Please don't piss and shit everywhere. It's right here. Anyway. Oh boy! So uh, I thought that was a fun exper- experiment. Mm-hmm. Can uh, can we read a Wikipedia article and uh, make it entertaining? I think the answer is yes. <laughs> really? I would disagree. Oh no! Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. I forgot. Dude, we had people cutting off the hands <laughs> of Colonel Sanders statues to sh- dunk on the Muslims. God damn it. How was this not an excellent experience? By the, the way, uh, DP, I, I don't know if you're making this reference on purpose, but that was the motto of KFC for a while, dunk on the Muslims. <laughs> <laughs> they had it like up on signs in the windows. Soon after they removed it. I don't know why. See, See, what do you is... what do you think about um, black people wanting integration? Well, they eat chicken, don't they? Yeah, I guess that's right. Uh, Post nine eleven, Colonel Sanders. What do you think about Muslims? Dunk on them. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I should point Whoa. out for anybody listening, Colonel Sanders did make that original statement. That is not uh, Abismi being racist. <laughs> that 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 actually wasn't what he said. He was talking about the hippies. Oh, it was the hippies? Oh, what do you think, oh, what do you think I, about I retract the my statement. Yeah. I, what do you say about black people then? <laughs> Don't cut them. Well, I think, uh, well I think black I think black people are fans of chicken, so <laughs> So that was a Bisbee being racist, okay. Oh man. And I didn't even make a, a big iron joke when Texas Rangers came up. Uh should we move on to our other story? Okay, so twenty questions. You you linked that though. 
Yeah, we could do that too. That is long too. What the fuck is wrong with you, DP? Uh, I think that one's deceptively long because it's like two lines and then space. Two lines. Oh wait, that's space. a Disney that is deceptively long. Okay, all right. That's how women describe me: <laughs> deceptively long. Deceptive and long. Okay, gotcha. Mm. All right. You know, it looks short. <laughs> a certain angle. All right. So twenty that's questions. Because, that's because you're looking at the tip of the penis. <laughs> what the fuck? All right. 20 what questions. Are we, what are we reading? We're reading 20 questions. Uh, scaryforkids.com. Family-friendly, child-friendly episode. 20questions.com. No. Scaryforkids.com. 20 questions. Oh, my God. This is... <laughs> what, what did we pick? We were going to read something else, and then it ended up being way too long. And now it's like... Stupid? What is this What is this picture that I'm looking at? Of like, I have no idea. It is a picture of Ethan Hawke. And some other actress in a car from a some movie pr- promo. Yeah. Some 90s rom-com trash. Yeah. He's he's a man from space. She's a talking mannequin. Together, they'll pull off the bank heist of the century. Join us now They'll for... find true love along the way. Yeah. Join us now for 90s shit fest. All right. Oh, man. So 20 Questions is a scary text message story about a girl who was being taken out on a mystery mystery date (laughs) by her boyfriend. How do you go on a mystery date with your already boyfriend? Open the door for your mystery date. Oh, hey, Todd. (laughs) Surprise, it was me, (laughs) your boyfriend, (laughs) all along. Oh, Abysme, can you say that to Paprika tonight? (laughs) <laughs> Can you just burst in the door and go, surprise, it's me, your boyfriend, all along? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this was written March 10th, uh, 2018 by wow. Scary for Kids. Yeah, I don't think they wrote it. They probably copied and posted it. But... Oh, they commissioned this. Sure, sure. <laughs> Scaryforkids.com. So it's, it's not scary for us, but it's scary for kids. Yeah, it's scary for kids to exist. Do, do we want to pick parts here? Because we have Jack and Emma. I'm pretty sure it's only Jack and Emma. Now, are we sure? Before we start, let me put a link in chat. Do we want to read this instead? I'm Jack and Emma, all right. <laughs> oh, my God, really? Oh, of course that's on here. Huh. For anybody wondering, I posted uh, Smile Dog. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, that's all it And, no, uh, actually, I posted, let me just say, I posted Abandoned by Disney, which is on scaryforkids.com. Also posted by Scary for Kids. Interesting. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Huh. All right. So 20 questions. Is is Ethan Hawke and Alicia Silverstone, I'm going to say? Sure. And mm. let's continue. Who wants, uh, should I be Jack? Yes. Well, and one then, of us is not going to be able to read. Uh, There's only two characters. DP can be Jack. Abysme, you can be Emma, and I will be the sound effects. Okay. All right. Hey, are you ready for our date later? Yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> Where's this mystery spot? <clears throat> I can't tell you. It's, it's the Walmart dumpster. <laughs> because then it won't be a surprise. But I'm just so curious. Can't you give me a little hint? <laughs> mm. Please, pretty please with the cherry on top. How about a game of 20 questions? Yes! If you can guess where I'm taking you tonight, see if you can guess where I'm taking you tonight. Um, is it indoors? No, 19 left. Okay, outdoors? Um, is it an event? No, 18. So it's a place outdoors. Ding! Yes, 17. I was just thinking out loud with that one. (laughs) Still 17. Ugh, okay. Does this place involve physical activity? No, but it can. No, 16. Bet you'll never guess it. Don't doubt me. Is it somewhere with a lot of people? Ding! Oh, we're going to hell. It's it's going to be hell. Yes. Technically, yes. 15. Technically? Hmm, what does that mean? Interesting. Are there woods around it? Ding! 14. Oh, yeah, yes. those, those hell woods. Hellwood. Hellwood. Hellwood! Get down off there! (laughs) Is it past the hill? Ding! Yes, 13 more questions. Is it somewhere we've been together before? No. 12. Uh... (laughs) Jack? Jack. Uh Giving up? 
You will find out tonight. I'm not a quitter. Twelve more questions. I can do this. Sure you can, lol. Is there water at this place? Psst. No, eleven. This really is a mystery spot. I planned it that way, winky face. I love also how on the site you can't highlight text to copy Wait. and take it somewhere else. Oh, my oh God, wow. Wow. <laughs> Wow. They this think that the... they own the stories. Okay. Uh, this is the scummiest thing in the world. It's pretty <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> Scarystoriesforkids.com, including Abandoned by Disney, which I think has profanity in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think you're right. <sighs> let me just let me just take a quick moment here. Let me search for the word fuck on scaryforkids.com. Okay, lots of results for fuck on scarykids.com. How about... Uh... Coom? Damn. Well, damn is in uh, Abandoned by Disney, so... Yeah. Damn. Abandoned by goddamn Disney. <clears throat> All right. I planned it that right, way. Anyway. Is it past the train tracks? Ding! Oh, uh, just barely. Yes. Well, yes. Ten more to go. <laughs> Suddenly you're southern. <laughs> I think you're getting closer. No idea. Um, I don't know what that emoji is. You don't know What's... what colon P is. Well, yeah, but what would you call that? I had pee in her colon. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> that depends on the colon, doesn't it? What's past the train tracks surrounded by woods? You never give a girl the oh, old pee oh. enema? You know what's surrounded by woods, has a lot of people in it, and is past the train tracks? Graveyard? Yep. Mm, there you go. Put your thinking cap on, or just give up and wait for the surprise tonight. Ten more questions, and then I'll wait. Is the spot big? Definitely big. No, define big. Yeah. Define big. Six or more inches. Um, <laughs> Wait like a minute, eight... no. <laughs> Average or more. <laughs> <laughs> like acres upon acres of land big? Trojan now releases uh, small condoms for people with micro penises who are under 13 inches. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Why don't they just uh, why don't they just release like hair ties but for penises? Mm. Those are called cock rings. No, not a ring, just like a like a tie, like a you know, like a like, bolo tie for your penis, <laughs> like a, like an elastic tie. Oh yeah, a bolo tie. Yeah, a ballo tie. <laughs> oh, a bollocks tie. Oh, you know what? I bet the reason they don't uh, sell ballo ties is because people would accidentally tie them behind their balls, and mm -hmm. that would totally make it not work. So that'd be because that'd be weird. Yeah, that'd be weird. <laughs> oh, Jack. <laughs> Oh. Couldn't, you, couldn't you picture a dick in a bolo tie being like the like the evil oil tycoon in a cartoon? <laughs> Adorable. Oh, now, now, don't don't make me get up in the morning and <laughs> come out here to <laughs> jack around with you guys. Anyway, <laughs> is his name Woody? Jack. Oh no! Nine more questions. Is there something to do at this spot? Apart from walking and looking around, like an abandoned tire swing? Bzz. That was three. Uh -huh. Yeah. Ha uh ha. -huh. Where are you thinking of? But no, eight left. You, she's thinking of the old abandoned zoo with the tire yeah. swing. and yeah. <laughs> OMG, what else is over there? Stumped. Colon P. Stumped, by the way. <laughs> Isn't that that Kevin Smith horror movie about the amputee? Uh, redneck family that goes around killing people in Texas. Uh, it, it's about know. all the decapitated trees. Are you oh. think, I think you're thinking of Stumps.avi. Stumps.avi. <laughs> decapitated trees, by the way, an excellent name for a metal band. Mm. Yeah. yeah. This is boring. Okay, go ahead. Perhaps. Is it somewhere that people are allowed to go, like a public place? Ding. Oh, yeah. We won't be trespassing seven more. Hmm. I need to consult Google. Oh. Uh. Who would that's what? cheating? No, it's just using my resources, Colin P. It's just using my resources, Colin P. Stop calling <laughs> me that. It's not a good pet name. <laughs> so just because that one time I let you pee in my colon. <laughs> Emma. Um, so, so I have a legitimate question for you guys. We're about... Uh -huh. uh, wow, we're not even halfway through this. We yeah, know it's Jesus. a cemetery. We know it's a cemetery. Do we oh my have god, any... they start playing Hangman at one point. Oh. Ugh. So, uh, my question is, overall, what do we think of the story so far? It's, it's. Do we think it's, um... like, realistic? Do we think it has any character 
to it. I, I think I could see a child being scared by this, but it would definitely have to be cut in half, I would say. Hmm. Yeah. The child would have to be cut in half to be scared of mm. this? What? Yeah, totally. Damn. That's hardcore. Wait yeah. a minute. It's, it's... Oh, we're almost done, kind of. Really? We're kind of like less than halfway very close to being done. I um, no, it's just, just a ton of comments. Whoa, we're less than halfway there. Oh, peeing in a colon. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. My dick is hard, but it'll come out, I swear. Uh, you've got seven more to go. Uh, you can use your Google after the game. You're going to find out later anyhow. <laughs> uh, lost my place. Ooh, there uh, we go. Haha, <laughs> okay. If it means that much to you, can I have a hint, like a letter? You want to play Hangman now? Yes. How many letters is the place? <laughs> um, IDK... That's not how 20 questions work. Yeah, Come on, please, please, pretty please. That is how 20 questions work. One of the questions is how many letters is in the name of the place. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you could ask that, yeah. Um, you have to consult the official 20 questions rulebook. Oh, yeah. You'll have to convince me. I join, like us on, join us on Kickstarter for the 20 questions field guide. I like solving puzzles, and I'm so curious. And you'd be even more, and you'd be even more wonderful if you gave me how many letters it is. That's a weird sentence. Haha, uh-huh, you convinced me. It's eight letters long. Now, no more hints. All right, eight letters long. C E M E T A R Y. Okay. E R Y. What did C-O-A-R-Y. I say? C O A R Y. Oh, I was thinking of Pet Cemetery. Sorry, go ahead. Mm. Oh no, uh, eight letters long. C O C K R I. Ng. <laughs> there you go. Eight letters. That's so. No, eight letters is not long. <laughs> well, for Emma, it is. Emma is a I, fucking idiot. I guess. <laughs> I was hoping it'd be four or five, maybe six. Eight could be anything. Four or five <laughs> or six could be anything, Emma. <laughs> she still hasn't figured out that it's a graveyard. Where do you live, pretty... Alabama? Can I? Can I just point out that the word anything is eight letters, so eight yeah. could be anything. <laughs> yeah. But it's something, I promise. Ooh. Uh, I'm running out of guesses. Seven more, unless you want to give up. Can I ask you guys Never. something? More. Yeah. Uh, this probably is just my experience, uh, anecdotal and so on and so forth, and it probably says a lot about relationships and everything, but have you guys ever known a girl that would actually go through all this and not just at this point say, I'm not doing this? <laughs> If you're not going to tell me, I don't care. Bye. <laughs> no, because Paprika loves to solve puzzles. Oh, I see. So she okay. totally does play this game with me. All right. I guess I just have known very incurious people. There you go. Uh, usually by now, we're, we're usually having sex. Oh, okay. Is it eight letters? No, it's not eight letters. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, blah, 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 blah. Is it never? I am. Yeah, never. never. Why are we going there late at night? Is that when it's best to go? Ooh, good question. But for this purpose, yes, it's best at night. Yeah, it's totally a fucking cemetery. <sighs> what does that mean? That's really vague. What's the purpose? Most people go there during the day. Huh. Okay, six left. I think I'm getting closer. Are there flowers at this place? There can be. I think there or- usually are some. Why wouldn't there be flowers at... Uh, yeah, totally would be. Can this I- is, oh, this is dumb. Can I? Why would, she, why would she ask if there are flowers? Yeah, that's. Mm, yeah, I, it's almost like Emma knows because Emma is also the author. Yeah, the thing is, I would be, I would forgive this story completely if the ending was uh, the eight-letter place they're going is Six Flags. Like, that, <laughs> like that's it. Oh, okay. Well, whatever. <laughs> but it turns out they're going there on a day that a ride malfunctions and kills people. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the day the ride malfunctioned and killed people, part seven. The day of all the malfunctioning rides. Hmm. Uh, is there a fence around the place? Uh, yes, five more guesses. I think I know where we're going, but I'm confused why. Maybe it's not where I'm thinking, because the place I'm thinking of isn't romantic at all. It's spooky. It is Six Flags. Okay, good. <laughs> I guess we'll see. Maybe we shouldn't have ruined the surprise. Maybe. Do people frequent there? Depends. Four more guesses. Was that horror indie flick film there? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> you know, that horror indie flick. The horror indie flick, you know, uh, I don't know, Attack of the Independent 
party? I don't know. Graveyard date. Graveyard Gra- date. Yes, three more guesses. It's the cemetery, right? We're going to the cemetery? Aha, uh-huh, you guessed it. The cemetery? That's the surprise spot you picked for our date? Well, like, I've, I've, who, who hasn't gone on the cemetery date? Hmm. Open the coffin for your cemetery date, Todd. Because I, I've been on cemetery dates. Cemeteries are like the place where you take dates if you're gothic. Or, uh, going to murder them. Yeah, yeah, and or. Uh, <laughs> you have two more questions left. Choose wisely. Cemeteries are creepy at night. Why are we going to a cemetery? To bury a body. <gasps> what? Why would we do that? Is this a joke? Are you really taking me somewhere else? Please be kidding, Jack. This isn't funny. Answer me. Let's go somewhere else. I'll pick the spot. Please tell me there isn't a body in the trunk of your car. There's not. There can't be, Jack. Are you kidding? Are you kidding, Jack? Answer me. In the trunk of your car? Why would you assume that? Mm-hmm. I, th- I think it's it's young kids pretending they're teenagers. Is he texting yeah. while driving? Yeah. You have one question left. Choose wisely. You're freaking me out. This isn't funny. One question left. Choose wisely. Please stop saying that. I don't want to guess anymore. I give up. I don't want to play anymore. You have one question <sighs> left. Choose wisely. Please stop. You have one question left. Okay, I'll ask the final question. Choose wisely. <laughs> Whose body are we burying? Uh, yours. <laughs> it's President Obama. It's a Colonel Sanders statue. <laughs> now listen. Uh, I'm going to bury the Colonel Sanders statue in the cemetery. So the Henshin Tigers can stop losing. Now, Joe, I need you to take these hedge clippers and cut off its hands in accordance with uh, Sharia law. <laughs> uh, I, uh, some of these comments down here. Well, um, this is great. 10 out of 10 crazed boys. <sighs> I, I, there's one uh, comment here. Yeah, I already knew it. But it's like with exclamation points, like excited. Does he kill her or bury her alive? And what does she do now? <laughs> Those are different uh, different things. Killing her and burying her alive, totally different. <laughs> this, uh, this site's kind of garbage. Uh, scary for kids fan underscore, which is totally not, you know, <laughs> the person <laughs> who posted this. Ha ha, nice twist. Yeah, who are they stealing this shit from? Do they just take, like, submissions and then not credit people? Well... <sighs> We can't. Copy I don't even paste. see. I don't even see a submission form. No, I think well, we no, just Christine. steal shit. This place just lives stories, man. Fuck you guys. Yeah, this is fucking wrong. Let's just since we can't copy and paste, let's just type out Jack colon Hey, are you ready for our date later? Put it in quotation marks and Google it. Uh, it's on Facebook. Urban legends and creepy stories on Wattpad. It's on Amino. Mm. Uh, How to play twenty questions is the title on one of these places. Uh, this is yeah. some fucking, like, YouTube kids' channel bullshit. Yeah, it really is. Well, that's disappointing. Very. It's not... See, this is the thing. I, I was... And I know you guys probably were expecting this, too. I was expecting it to be scary for kids. Yeah. <laughs> Since yeah. it's scary for kids. I was like, expecting, like, goosebump stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or kind of, like, uh... Scary stories to tell in the dark kind of thing. Mm, yeah. This is basically like that. What what was that Twitter account that had the huge collapse and blow up? Oh, Rare Horror? RareHorror.com. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is basically the same type of site where they just copy and paste and try to get, you know... We're not going to credit anybody because that would be an advertisement. Yeah. For anybody who didn't, doesn't know what that is, I don't know how we would even begin to explain it all, especially at the end of an episode, but... Uh, Rare Horror on Twitter was posting people's stuff, and when they got asked to credit people, they had a whole big blow-up, and were like, you know, we're giving you exposure, that type of bullshit, blah, blah, blah. We don't want to advertise stuff. Also, you can pay us 20 to $80 to advertise stuff yeah. via our fucking Twitter. <laughs> and, and then they, like, shut down and said, oh, a bunch of trolls, you know, we were doing oh, yeah. so much for the community, blah, blah, blah. It's just a bunch of fucking shysters. The trolls were review-bombing us. <laughs> <laughs> They were asking us to do the ethical thing. Uh, we had to shut down. Well, well yeah, so uh, don't go to scaryforkids.com, because it looks like they just fucking steal shit. In fact, mm-hmm. yeah, we're not going to fucking link this. We'll, we'll link it on, like, Wattpad or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I will say, uh, Abysme is not reading the title of a, of a creepypasta when he says, don't go to scaryforkids.com. That does sound like... <laughs> A really good title for a story. Oh, yeah. Somebody, uh, somebody sent us scaryforkids.com, and now I wish they hadn't. <laughs> God damn it. And now I'm adding them to the FBI, to the internet police. 
This has been the Fear Fiction Podcast. Your hosts are Abysme, Dead Palette, and Slime Beast. Music by Abysme. Art by C.F. Comer. Voice over by Atticus Jackson. Edited by Elias the Intern. Subscribe to Fear Fic on YouTube to stay up to date on new episodes. Hello everyone. Welcome back to Kid Friendly Spooky Story Hour. I'm your host, Ad Friendly Avery. Today we're going to be continuing to read an original story I wrote called I Threw a Statue of Colonel Sanders into a Japanese River because of a baseball tradition and now I think I'm cursed. Part 5. Remember to turn off that pesky ad block so I can reap ad money out of you and only make ad friendly remarks in the comments or YouTube will disable them because they've lost control of their own site. Now let's get on to the story. Hey Reddit, I'm back again. I'll continue where I left off. I was still inside the haunted house the old lady told me to go to to put the spirit of Colonel Sanders at peace. It was his mansion located in the downtown Osaka Fujibari district. The house was obviously derelict for years, but it smelled like there was freshly fried chicken wafting through the air. Very spooky. That's when I turned the corner and saw the ghost of Colonel Sanders, a white apparition, raping a hot pocket. He was just fucking the shit out of that hot pocket, that flaky pastry with his gaijin wiener, so hard that the scalding hot meat filling was falling out the other side. But I don't think it was any normal sentient hot pocket because of what was all around the dusty room. There were skinned humans on hooks made to look like pigs in a slaughterhouse. Was the ghost of Colonel Sanders skinning humans and making hot human hot pockets? Had his desire for meat evolved past that of a normal social taboo? And did the hot pocket meat still contain the immortal soul of all the people that he killed? I don't know. Maybe you can suggest what happened and I'll write the story based around what you guys tell me the story is. Anyway, I needed to get out of that hellhole, so I shot Webb at a tree outside the window and swung away until I got back down to downtown Tokyo. I can't die when my baby is on the way, else would be mad if she had to raise the child all alone. Alright everyone, this has been Kid Friendly Spooky Story Hour. Tune in next week for our Paw Patrol episode where we find out that Ryder and Sky were both behind the Hollow de Moor in 9-11. Not sure what to give your dog as a treat? Try cat shit. They love it. Hmm. That's it. Do they love it or do they just eat it, you know, because there's nothing else around? They fucking love it. Haven't you ever seen that commercial with the dogs where they're like, what would you do for a kitty turd? You know what's mm. that? Was that also an adult swim? No. No, that's on the television every time I turn it on. It's it's that or static and the names of my dead relatives. Does, is Sid in control of all of your programming? You mean Sid the science kid from the PBS uh, television series? Yes. Oh, uh, no. Oh, shit. Or do you mean Sid Vicious? Could be Sid Vicious. Okay, He's not also doing no. anything anymore. Also no. Man, I wonder what Sid Vicious is up to. It's funny because, like... He wasn't a particularly good wrestler, and so I can't imagine, like, I guess he's just rich enough to where he doesn't do anything, See, when but you he's said, also what is, Sid Vicious. When you said, what is Sid Vicious up to, I was like, he's dead? <laughs> Not much? Um, different different Sid Vicious. Yeah, we're thinking of different Sid Vicious. You're thinking of Sid Viscous, you say. I'm thinking of the wrestler Sid Vicious. You're thinking of... You're thinking of shit suspicious. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Wait, so like is Sid Vicious and Sid Vicious the same person and are are they both dead? And are they both one person? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wouldn't that be the ultimate conspiracy theory? Sid Vicious faked his own death, changed his appearance, and became Sid Vicious. Wait. That's the one that's thing you want to change That's most. a really big career change. Hmm. Sid Vicious is TV's hunter? <laughs> yeah. I've got a device for this. Sid Vicious is hunting God in, damn it. in the English underground. <laughs> you know, uh, S- Sid Vicious and Sid Vicious do 
look like they could be the same person. I mean, there's got to give them a lot of steroids. Or, you know. There's got to be people who who are listening to this that don't know who either <laughs> Sid Vicious are. All right, picture <laughs> picture a five foot tall uh, guy with a Jerry curl who dresses in. Uh, a, and a lavish mustache suit and a Santa's hat. Yeah, a mustache and a Santa's and hat. Bottoms. A lavish Santa suit. <laughs> He's constantly throwing razor blades at people, just like flicking them. You know, mm-hmm. lavender gloves. Yeah, lavender gloves is my, fa- my favorite wrestler. <laughs> I don't know. Satin panties with Alf on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One eye. Uh, the other eye, the other eye hole is just home to a magic eight ball, you know. <laughs> oh, and he's on fire. <laughs> he's constantly on fire. <laughs> Abysme, add something. Add a feature to, to Sid Vicious. Uh, his voice is uh, fairly akin to Gary Oldman. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Gary Oldman. Now that was just weird. I don't know. Until then, I was. I think people were convinced. And he's also a TV's hunter. Yeah. <laughs> And he rides around on a rascal scooter despite not being disabled. No. Yeah. Just does it for the fuck of it. Yeah. And always illegally parks. Yep. That's why they call him Sid the Rascal Vicious. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> somebody, oh. okay. Somebody out there write a creepypasta about that and somebody out there draw that. I don't know what the fuck. Is. Make a short film. I don't know. Yeah. So we're deleting that one, right? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> fuck. <laughs>